بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد We continue with the explanation of the narrations from Mishkat al-Masabih. The explanation of the Noble Shaykh Muhammad ibn Salih al-Uthaymeen rahimahullah ta'ala. We come to the narration عن سفيان الثقفي رضي الله عنه قال قلت يا رسول الله قل لي في الإسلام قولا لا أسأل عنه أحدا بعدك وفي رواية غيرك قال قلت آمنت بالله ثم استقم This narration on the authority of Sufyan ibn Abdullah al-Thaqafi radiyallahu an He said, I said, O Messenger of Allah Say to me a statement in Islam that I can ask no one else other than you about. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam responded, Say, I believe in Allah and then be upright. Say, I believe in Allah and then be upright. Here, Sufyan ibn Abdullah al thaqafi he requested from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to say to him a statement in the religion that he can ask no one else about except for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Responded with a short answer But the answer is magnificent As it relates to the benefits And this is known as Jawami ul kalam The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Having the ability To speak with few words but these few words have vast meaning. And this was a, a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon the Prophet sallallahu that he gave to no other Prophet before him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This statement Qul amantu billah Say I believe in Allah Meaning I believe in Allah with certainty That he Subhanahu wa ta'ala Is the Lord alone The creator of the heavens and the earth alone That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He alone, I believe that He alone has the right to be worshipped I believe in Allah that He Has the most beautiful names and lofty attributes And nothing and no one 
is comparable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala This is what is intended by I believe in Allah Because Al-Iman Billah Azza wa Jal It consists of three matters Al-Iman Billah Yani bi rububiyyatillah Believing in Allah by believing in the Lordship of Allah Al-Iman bi asma'illahi wa sifatihi Bi asma'illah al-husna wa sifatihi al-ulya Believing in Allah by believing in the beautiful names of Allah And the lofty attributes of Allah Waliman billah is also believing that Allah alone is entitled to all worship. These are the three aspects of believing in Allah. Believing in Allah's Lordship, that Allah alone is the Lord of the heavens and earth, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the one who Causes one who brings about life and causes death, the one who controls all of the affairs, the one who provides all of this is a part of the lordship of Allah. Then you have the issue of worship. A part of believing in Allah is to believe that Allah alone has the right to be worshipped, being that He, Allah alone, created you. Allah alone has the right to be worshipped being that He, Allah alone, created you. Allah alone has the right to be worshipped being that He, Allah alone, provides for you. Allah alone has the right to be worshipped being that He, Allah alone, is the one who gives life and causes death. So the aspect of ibadah or the worship being for Allah alone is necessitated by Allah's Lordship. Because Allah is the Lord alone, Allah alone is to be worshipped. And whoever does not have the characteristics of Lordship, then this person or this thing does not have the right to be worshipped besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in reality, nothing and no one has the attributes of lordship. No one has created everything in existence. Only Allah No human being has created everything in existence. No angel has created everything in existence. No jinn has created everything in existence. Only Allah Azza wa Jal created everything in existence. So being that Allah Azza wa Jal alone has created everything in existence, then Allah alone is to be worshipped. Allah Azza wa Jal provides for the creation. Allah provides for mankind. Allah provides for the jinn. Allah provides for the animals that walk the earth. Allah Azza wa Jal provides for the fish in the sea. Who else does this besides Allah? No one. So being that Allah alone is the provider for creation, then Allah Azza wa Jal alone is the one who is entitled to all acts of worship. So this is an important point here, that when we say that we believe in Allah Azza wa Jal, 
is not just something that we say verbally. We believe in Allah has affairs connected to it. This statement, I believe in Allah. There are matters connected to saying that you believe in Allah. It's not just a statement that that you make. I believe in Allah and then that's it. I believe in Allah entails worshipping Allah also. I believe in Allah entails believing in Allah with the correct belief. Not just saying that you believe that Allah exists. For there are many from amongst the non-Muslims who believe that Allah exists. But that doesn't make them believers. Believing that Allah exists is not enough as it relates to believing in Allah. Rather, believing in Allah has the three matters connected to it that we just covered. Now, another point, Barakallahu Fikum, after saying that you believe in Allah, there must follow actions upon uprightness. The Shaykh he says, Al Muhim an tu'mina billahi tabaraka wa ta'ala imanan kaminan thumma tastaqim ala shari'atihi fata'mal ma awjabahu Allah ta'ala fi shari'a wa idha fa'ala hadha faqad ata bil islam kaminan. The noble Shaykh Muhammad ibn Salih al Uthaymin rahimahullah ta'ala he states, What's important is that you believe in Allah with complete faith. You believe in Allah with complete faith. Then you are to be upright upon His legislation. Therefore, you implement that which Allah has made obligatory in the legislation and when the person does that then he has come with Islam in a complete manner when the person does that he has come with Islam in a complete manner وَهَذَانِ الْوَصْفَانِ الإيمان والاستقامة هما اللذان ذكرهما الله سبحانه وتعالى في قوله إن الذين قالوا ربنا الله ثم استقاموا تتنزل عليهم الملائكة ألا تخافوا ولا تحزنوا وأبشروا بالجنة التي كنتم توعدون نحن أولياءكم في الحياة الدنيا وفي الآخرة وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَشْتَهِي أَنفُسُكُمْ وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَدَّعُونَ نُزُلًا مِنْ غَفُورِ الرَّحِيمِ Allah Azza wa Jal, He mentions indeed those who say Our Lord is Allah and then they are upright Those who say our Lord is Allah and then they are upright Meaning after declaring their faith, verbally mentioning their faith, the actions follow. Salina. The actions they follow. It is not from Islam that a person he just has lip profession and talks about being a believer. Rather, the individual show improves and establishes his faith. Like when the Prophet ﷺ said, was sadaqatul burhan. And giving charity is a proof. A proof of what? That you are a believer. It's actions. 
not just lip profession and claims. Because anyone can make a claim to be a Muslim. But who truly is practicing Islam, that's a different story. Anyone can claim Islam. Anyone can claim righteousness. But the one who is truly practicing Islam, the one who is truly upon the path of righteousness, that is a different story. Because now, that is determined by the person's actions. Not just speech alone. So Allah Azza wa Jal, He mentions, Indeed, those who say our Lord is Allah, and then they are upright, the angels come down upon them. The Shaykh, He says, Tanzilu bi rifqin wa hawnan Shay'an fa shay'an The angels come down With gentleness and ease upon that servant Meaning at when? The time of death Wa thalika inda al-mawt Inda fawat al-dunya Wa inda fawat al-ahl Wal-amwal Wal-awtan Fi sa'a Ashad ma takun ala al-insan Tatanazzalu alayhim The Shaykh, he says, this takes place or that takes place at the time of death. At the time when the worldly life comes to an end for the person. At the time when a person, he loses his family, he loses his wealth, he loses the land that he comes from. At this time, it is the most severe that a person will be in. The most severe situation that a person will be in, the angels come down upon him. For what reason? To bring comfort to his heart And to give him glad tidings Because this is a scary, frightening moment Because this is something that never happened to you before in life You understand? It's it's done So it's a scary moment Because you're leaving everything that you have behind And you don't know what's waiting for you on the other side so the angels they come down to bring tranquility and comfort to his heart and to give him glad tidings by saying La takhafu wa la tahzana wa abshiru bil jannah allati kuntum tu'adun They come down saying to the person do not be afraid do not be afraid of what? Don't be afraid of what's waiting for you in the next life. And do not be sad about what? Ahsant. Don't be sad over what you're leaving behind. Allah will take care of your family. Allah will take care of your affairs. But this is for who? It's not for everybody. الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا Those who say, our Lord is Allah, and then they are upright. You have to have these two characteristics in order to receive this bounty. Reward comes with a price. Don't just get a reward. You have to do some work. And this is the work here. Believing in Allah and being upright upon practicing Islam. That's the work. If you do this work throughout your life, and you die upon this work, then Allah Azza wa Jal will make your death easy for you. Allah Azza wa Jal will send down those angels to give you the glad tidings of the paradise which you were promised. Shaykh Uthameen, he says, فَيُبَشَّرُونَ بِالْجَنَّةِ وَهُمْ فِي سِيَاقَ الْمَوْتِ فَهِينَ إِذَنْ يَسْتَبْشِرُونَ وَيَسْخُلْ خُرُوجُ الرُّوحِ مِنْهُمْ فَتَخْرُجُ الرُّوحِ مِنْ بَدْنِهَا 
وتخرج سهلة منقادة لأنها بشرت بروح وريحان ورب غير غضبان Sheikh Taymin says that these believers are given the glad tidings of paradise while they are dying. So when they receive this news of the paradise, they become happy. So as a result of that, it becomes easy for their souls to come out of their body. Because the soul is going to a better place, for real. Not just how, oh, he's in a better place now. A criminal, fascist, zani, killing people and all types of corruption. and People just so easily say, oh, he's in a better place now. SubhanAllah. Worshipping other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for sure, that gets you in the hellfire. Or the other sins are under Allah's will. If He wills, he forgive you. If He wills, He punish you. But for sure, worshiping other than Allah gets you in the hellfire, dying in that state. And people have died in that state with other sins, and people quick, oh, He's in a better place now. The better place is truly for those who believe and are upright in their practice. Of worshipping Allah alone. You let some people tell it. Everybody's in paradise. Everybody. Is not in paradise. We hope that we will be. From the people of paradise. And we strive. To work for the paradise. But everybody's not in paradise. Somebody's, a lot of people are going to the hellfire. And a lot of people will be, remain in the hellfire. Not everybody will be in the paradise, in the state of bliss in the hereafter. SubhanAllah, the people of Allah, the people, you know, they're blind. The people are ignorant. People don't judge with the proper scales. But Allah Azza wa Jal brings clarity to these affairs. Indeed, those who say our Lord is Allah, and then they are upright. The angels come down upon them at the time of death, saying, Do not fear and do not have any grief. And glad tidings for you of the paradise which you were promised. So the soul comes out of its body with ease, submissive, because the soul has been given that, those glad tidings of the paradise. They have been, the soul has been given glad tidings that their Lord is pleased with them and He's not angry with them. So that makes the soul come out with ease. But now for the criminal person or the disbeliever, his affair is the opposite. When the angels come down to take the soul, it's not an easy situation because the angels are giving the soul the evil tidings of punishment awaiting. So the soul now is running in the body, not wanting to come out. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He discusses this matter in Surah Al-Nazi'at in Al-Hafidh ibn Kathir he comments Allah Azza wa Jalla says, "Wanazi'ati gharqa, wanashitati nashta." Allah swears by those angels who pull the soul out.
Ibn Kathir he states, Ibn Mas'ud, Ibn Abbas, Masruq, Sa'id Ibn Jubair, Abu Salih, and others have said, Al-Nazi'ati Gharqa, by those who pull out the souls drowning, these are the angels who remove the souls from the children of Adam. He goes on to say, among them are those whose souls are removed by the angels with difficulty as if he is drowning during the time the soul is being removed. And if any one of you has been in a pool or some deep water and you can't swim, you went and got in and had to get some help, you know that fright that comes over you when that water starts going down your throat and you think you, you're about to drown. It's not a good feeling. Alhamdulillah. But here, there's no one to save this person. You got saved, Alhamdulillah. Somebody saved you in the pool by Allah's permission. But at this time, when them angels are coming to snatch and rip that soul out, there's no one that's going to save this individual who has that sense of drowning. Ibn Kathir goes on to mention, there are those people whose souls the angels remove with ease. They are the ones who say, their Lord is Allah, and then they are upright upon the deen. As if they were unraveling him due to their briskness. And this is the meaning of Allah's statement, وَالنَّاشِطَاتِ نَشْتَى Those who free briskly. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned, and this is the meaning of the hadith, that when the angels come to take the soul of the disbeliever and wicked person, it says, O oh, evil soul, come out to the anger and the punishment of your Lord. So that the soul starts hiding in the body. So then the angel has to rip the soul out of the body. And it's like taking wet wool off of the back of a sheep with a score. Very difficult. Especially that the wool is wet. Wet wool off of the back of a sheep with a score. I'll show you. I'm going to show you. So you can picture what's being said. Come. All the water, go to the barbecue thing. Now imagine using this, right? To take wet wool off of the back of a sheep. It's going to be very difficult. It's going to take, but it's going to, it rips off. That's how the angels are ripping the soul of the wicked person out of the body. Because of it running, because it has been given the evil tidings. So it doesn't want to go out to the anger and punishment of Allah. So it tries to cling to the body, so it's ripped out of the body. It doesn't come out with ease. And with after is worse. So this is an this is a warning for us from Allah, a warning from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that it, the person is to rectify his affairs before that time comes. Shukr Taymin he says, 
هذا والله الفخ وهذا الفوز by Allah this is a matter that one brags about and this is the, the triumph and the salvation وَأَبْشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُعَدُونَ and Allah he mentions and have the glad tidings this is what the angels they say and have the glad tidings of the paradise which you were promised نَحْنُ أَوْلِيَاءُكُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا We are your protectors. Or we were your protectors in the life of the world. وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ As well as in the after. Shaykh Uthameen, he says, وَفِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا إِذَا أَقْبَلَ الْإِنسَانِ عَلَى رَبِّهِ بِصِدْقٍ وَإِخْلَاسٍ وَإِخْلَاسٍ يسر الله له ملكا يصدده ويوفقه ويضله على الخير ويحرسه من الشر In the life of this world when the person turns to his Lord with truthfulness and sincerity Allah will make easy for him to have an angel that will keep him straight When you turn to Allah with truthfulness and sincerity, when you go to worship Allah, when you go to practice Islam and be a Muslim, Allah will make easy for you to have that angel who will be there keeping you upright, keeping you straight, guiding you to that which is good and protecting you from evil. And we all know that at times we hear the voice that encourages us to do good and we hear the voice that tells us not to do evil this is that protection that Allah Azawajal gives for the believers who are upright the angel who encourages with good and tells you to leave off evil. Shaykh Uthameen, he says, كَمَا قَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ لِحَسَّانِ بِنِ ثَابِتْ أَلَّذِي كَانَ الشَّاعِرَ الرَّسُولِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَلَّهُمَّ أَيِّدْهُ بِرُوحِ الْقُدُسِ Just as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He said to Hassan ibn Thabit Who used to be the poet Of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He said Oh Allah aid him with The Holy Spirit For lack of better translation The Ruh Al-Qudus Yani Jibreel Aid him with Jibreel To encourage him And to aid him And to direct him upon that which is good So these are the Malaika Allah says they mention نَحْنُ أَوْلِيَاءُكُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَلِذَلِكْ كُلُّ إِنسَانْ فِي قَلْبِهِ لَمَّتَانْ So these are the angels They say to the individual at the time of death We were We were your protectors in the life of the world. This is the true meaning of the guardian angels. The, these are the real guardian angels. Not the guys who run around with the jackets and the red hats and you know, we're gonna clean the streets of New York up and all this, right? <laughs> you know, these are the real guardian angels, right? The true guardian angels, the angels that Allah created from light. The angels that Allah Azza wa Jal send to aid you and protect you in the life of this world. Until that time comes when they do they can they don't protect you anymore. Meaning death. When Allah decrees for you to die, that's it. They stand down, for lack of better words. 
Allah's decree of your death takes place. But throughout your life, they protect you in those close calls, situations that could have happened, Allah allows them to protect you. And this is a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon the people. You hear that voice tells you to walk another way. Later on you find out somebody, just the way you, were, you wanted to walk, somebody got killed right there or robbed, hurt. It'd be things like that. You was going to go down a path of evil. The angels spoke to you and directed you away from them. You got that. It's not revelation. Okay, don't buy walk around thinking they are prophet. Man. It's not revelation. It's like being inspired. Do we have to? No, you have to be clear because people. Say, oh man, the angels. So okay, Prophet Muhammad had an angel came to him. So I got my angel. So I must be a prophet too. No, no, no. Let's not take it beyond what it is. But every individual. He has in his heart those inspirations that come from the angels and then those inspirations that come from shaitan. Yes. So it's like the angels whispering as well. He's encouraging you to do evil. I'm not excuse me, encouraging you to do good and shaitan is encouraging you to do evil. Because every human being has a jinn with him. And that jinn stays with you until you die. Every human being. The Prophet said this. They said, even you, O Messenger of Allah, you have a jinn with you, that's with you, that doesn't leave you. The Prophet said, even me, except that Allah aided me against my jinn, and my jinn became a Muslim. So he only encourages me with that which is good. Allah. Allah. <laughs> We don't have, we don't have that. <laughs> huh? Allah, but for sure we have the encouragements from the shaitan. We deal with that. Without a doubt. No, we, when, you, when that alarm goes off and, it's, and you hear that voice, sleep a little bit longer. Who do you think that is? Probably that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he mentioned how the shaitan tells you Nen. Go back to sleep, the night is long. The night is long. Get some more rest. Why are you getting up now to pray? Lay back down, get a little bit more sleep. Then the first alarm will go off. Got five more minutes. This is shaitan encouraging you so that you miss the salat. No no angel is going to Encourage you to miss Salat. And then remember the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned about the man who oversleeps the Salat that the shaitan pissed in his ears. This is real. This is, you know, it's not no Hollywood stuff. The real things going on. It's from the unseen, but Allah, He speaks the truth. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam speaks the truth. So it's important that, as an example, to protect ourselves from those things, going to bed upon wudu, purification. Uh, going to bed upon the legislated atkar, the words of dhikr that will aid us and help us to get up for salat and stuff like that. Or when the time, when you do wake up, making the legislated atkar for waking up so that that can aid you to untie the knots. Right? From the back of your head. The, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that shaitan ties three knots in the back of the person's head when he goes to sleep. So when he wakes up and gets up, that's one knot that's untied. When he goes and makes wudu, that's another knot that's untied. And when he makes the salat, that's the third knot that's untied. Real situations. 
check he says lamma malak wa lamma shaitan wal iyad billah falamma tul malak iad bil khair wa amr bi walamma tul shaitan bil aqs lianna allah azza wa jal yaqul الشيطان يعدكم الفقر ويأمركم بالفحشاء so the inspiration that comes from the angel is that inspiration of encouraging you inciting you and pushing you towards that which is good and commanding you to do good inspiring you with that which is good this is from the angel as for that which comes from the shaitan it's the opposite as allah says the shaitan threatens you with poverty and he commands you with indecency you hear that voice that tells you to look at the haram to listen to the haram that is there inside it speaks to you not going crazy the shaitan is real so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from his mercy upon a servant that he has those angels encouraging him and protecting him from the evil throughout his life so they say nahnu awliya'ukum fi al-hayat ad-dunya wa fi al-akhirah aydha fi idha bu'ithu min al-qubur تتلقاهم الملائكه هذا يومكم الذي كنتم توعدون شيخ تيمين says that the angels they say we are your protectors in the life of this world as well as in the hereafter and also in the hereafter they protect you so when the end, when mankind is resurrected from the graves the angels meet them and they say this is the day you were promised تحتفل بهم they celebrate with them this is the day when you're going to paradise this is the day you will promise that will make you feel good bring ease think about what's happening on the day of judgment from that which Allah has told us about and that which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us about the earth being a different earth no mountains everything just like a plain the sun being drawn near like the distance of a mile people sweating up to their ankles their knees their waist their necks no shade except for the shade of allah 70 the, the hellfire being dragged and it has 70,000 chains and on each chain there is what 70,000 angels pulling it and the hell fire will be roaring if you will hear it a woman who is pregnant will drop her load and then make a baby turn gray haired these are the things that's taking place turn gray from fright yawma yathru mar'u min akhi wa ummihi wa abi وصاحبته وبني لكل امرئ منهم يوم اذا شان يغني on the day when the person he run away from his brother and the person will run away from his mother and father the person will run away from his spouse and child why do you think people are running away from each other no you recognize people want their rights because everybody want every good they give. oh you owe me cuz everybody trying to get the paradise well, on that day we we'll, 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 uh, you people I'll want know my father you want to run away from him because you want to be afraid your father will ask for his rights okay. and on that day rights are paid with deeds no more money no nothing new. deeds are this is how people get their rights from others in deeds right indeed so the people will be running away from one another 
out of fear that they're going to lose from their deeds and then as a result of it may go to hellfire because they lost their deeds. The bridge being placed over the back of the hellfire. Frightening situation. But for those upright believers, the angels, they come to them and bring tranquility to their hearts and bring ease. Don't worry. This is the day you were promised. Paradise awaits you. Don't be afraid. And that day will be, di- they will be that day will be a heavy day, a difficult day for the disbelievers and the wicked people. But it is too late at that time. What Allah says, وَجِيءَ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ بِجَهَنَّمْ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ يَتَذَكَّرُ الْإِنْسَانُ وَأَنَّ لَهُ الذِّكْرَى يَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِي قَدَّمْتُ لِحَيَاتِي on the day when the hellfire is brought, on that day mankind will remember and reflect. But how will the remembrance and the reflection on that day be of any benefit? It's too late. As they have the saying, a day late and a dollar short, this is truly a day late. It's too late. You had the time, your life, you had the time to believe and do right. You had the time to make salat. You had the time to pay zakat. You had the time to fast in Ramadan. You had the time to make hajj. You had the time to do the good things that Allah required for mankind to do when you were alive. Now is the day of recompense. Now is time to get your pay. And you will be paid in full. You will be paid in full. Allah will not short change anyone. Allah will not, you will be paid. Whatever is due to you, you will get it. Allah, Allah Azza mentions, وَمَا أَنَا بِظَلَّامٍ لِلْعَبِيدِ And I am not one who oppresses the servants in any way. You want to get everything that you deserve. Nobody is going to be shortchanged. Nobody is going to uh, miss out or be or not be given that which he is entitled to. Everybody gets what they deserve. And you want to get what's coming to you. From good or from evil. Allah mentions, وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَشْتَهِ أَنفُسُكُمْ وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَدَّعُونَ That for you in the paradise is that which... Or in the, for you in the paradise, that which your souls desire, and that which you call for. I ma tatlubun, for kullu ma yishtehi al insan fi jannah yatihi, bal fi haziyada ala ma yishtehi. Kama kala azza wa jal, lahum ma yishaun fiha, waladina mazid. Everything that the person desires in the paradise will come to him. Rather, more will come to him as it relates to that which he desires. As Allah Azza wa Jal, he mentions, for them is that which they want within the paradise and we have more for them. This is how it will be in paradise. Alhamdulillah, no more working. Right? No more rushing to punch in on time and no more worrying about getting written up on the job for being late and no more worrying about putting in paperwork to get vacation time and no no more of that. No more getting sick, going to the doctor. No more using the bathroom. Right? No more. Right? No more bedtime. Right? Like that, right? No 
Yeah, it's fine. I guess no more worrying about falling into sin. But it's done. No, you, you, yeah. all of it, oh, before the people go into paradise, all of that lust and evil, all that stuff will be removed yeah. from the heart. Jealousy, yeah. All that jealousy, all of that will be removed. So much so that when you're in paradise and you see the people who are on the highest statuses in paradise, you won't be jealous of them. You won't desire what they have. You, you, you'll be comfortable with what you have. Um, that's amazing. Not, huh? You, you will see each other. People will see it. You know, on, on, uh, every Friday, there's a marketplace in Jannah that everybody comes to the marketplace. And on Fridays, everybody, Allah shows His face every Friday in Jannah. Every Friday in Jannah, Allah shows us. And that's what's intended when Allah says, and we have more. More meaning Allah will give us the ultimate reward, and that is us being able to look at His face in the paradise. There's, no, there's not going to be any reward that's going to be equivalent to the reward of looking at the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But just imagine being in paradise and thinking about chicken, and the chicken boom pops up right there for you. You ain't got to go around to the halal cart and walk and it's cold outside. We ain't got to do none of that no more, right? None of that no more. All of the things we go through in the life of this world to get a piece of chicken, right? People fighting over Popeye's chicken sandwiches and knocking each other. You got none of that stuff in paradise, right? You want chicken, you think of it, it shows up, right? Alhamdulillah. This is, wallah, this is a, a ni'mah. Everybody got two eyes. At the least, from the men, at the least, at the least, and then some have more. Because what if you were a man who had four wives? You will have your four plus the two that's in general. Yes, that's what four plus two is, right? Okay. And then you have those who have more due to their deeds. You know, so due to your deeds, you like your houses in paradise may be more than someone else's. Like for instance, the Sheikh Taymi mentioned a beautiful point about uh, praying the Hadith about praying twelve extra rakah in a day that a house for you is built in paradise. The Sheikh says it's not one house. Every day that you pray the twelve extra rakah, that's a house. Mm-hmm. Um, the yeah, the Sunnah prayers, the Nawafil that are connected to the two before Fajr, four before Dhuhr, two after Dhuhr. Two after Maghrib and two after Isha. Whoever prays these twelve uh, extra rakah in a day, you in a night, day and a night, you have a house built in paradise for that day. If you do it again tomorrow, that's another house. If you do it again, so let's say you you for the seven days for the whole week, you pray the twelve extra. That's seven houses, seven homes. So it depends on the people. Some people will have more than others in paradise, depending on your work. So the harder you work here in this dunya, the more you will have in the akhirah. Allah Azza wa Jal, He mentions, Nuzulan min ghafur rahim Ay diyafatan min ghafur rahim Huwa Allah Jalla wa Ala Wa asal Allah Ta'ala An yaja'alani wa iyaakum minhum The Shaykh he mentions that you will be the guest, you will be hosted, you will be guests who, in the paradise, and you will be permanent guests who are being hosted by the all forgiving and the bestower of mercy, and he is Allah Jalla wa Ala. The Shaykh within me, he says, and I ask Allah that he makes me in you from amongst them. Look at these mannerisms of making dua. The Shaykh, Rahimahullah, he didn't just make dua for himself, but he made dua for himself and for the, the and for the Muslims. But he began with himself, and that's befitting. Whenever you make dua for yourself and for others, you start with yourself and then mention the others. Or you make dua for yourself and others as a whole. Allah forgive us. Or you make dua for yourself 
or you just make dua for others. Those are the four ways of making dua. So you can't do it for others. And no, that's ba- that's bad mannerisms, as some of the mashaykh have mentioned, as it relates to making dua. The proper mannerisms, or you know, this or let me say, this is not proper mannerisms. It's not proper mannerisms when making dua for yourself and someone else that you begin with someone else, because in the Quran and elsewhere, Rabbana uh, lana dunubana wa li ikhwanina ladina sabakuna bil iman. O Allah, forgive us of our sins and forgive our brothers for their sins who preceded us in iman. So you begin with yourself first. Mm-hmm. No. Shaykh Uthaymeen, he says, فَمَنْ قَالَ آمَنْتُ بِاللَّهِ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامَ عَلَى ذَلِكَ فَلْيَبْشِرْ بِالْجَنَّةِ وَلْيَتَصَبَّرْ عَلَى مَا يَنَالُهُ مِنْ أَعْدَاءِ اللَّهِ الَّذِينَ يَسْخَرُونَ بِهِ وَيُؤْذُونَهُ وَيَلْمِزُونَهُ وَيَغْمِزُونَهُ فَلْيَصْبِرْ فَإِنَّ الْأَمْرُ قَرِيبٌ Shaykh Uthaymi says So whoever says I believe in Allah And then he is upright Upon that Then let him have The glad tidings of paradise Let him have the glad tidings Of the paradise And let him be patient Upon that which he encounters and that which he experiences from the enemies of Allah. This is very important here. Because when you say you believe in Allah, and then you are upright upon the deen, you're going to be tested. There's going to be some hardships we're going to experience. We are going to have enemies from the wicked and the disbelievers. Now, so we have to be patient upon that. The enemies and the disbelievers, those who make mockery of us, those who harm us, and those who they will like wink at one another when we pass by, like you know, to belittle us. And other than that, be patient for indeed the matter is near. This is what Shaykh Uthaymi mentions. And then he mentions the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal Inna Ladina Ajramu Kanu Mina Ladina Amanu Yabhakun. وَإِذَا مَرُّوا بِهِمْ يَتَضَامَزُونَ وَإِذَا انْقَلَبُوا إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِمْ انْقَلَبُوا فَاكِهِينَ وَإِذَا رَعَوْهُمْ قَالُوا إِنَّ هَؤُلَاءَ أَهْوَاتِ لَضَالُّونَ وَمَا أُرْسِلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ حَافِظِينَ فَالْيَوْمَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنَ الْكُفَّارِ يَضْحَكُونَ على الأرائك ينظرون هل ثوب الكفار ما كانوا يفعلون Indeed the criminals they used to laugh at those who believe and whenever they passed by them they used to wink at one another and when they would return back to their people they would return back jesting and laughing making mockery and when they saw the believers they would say indeed these individuals are astray but they were not sent as watchers over them. But this day, those who believe will laugh at the disbelievers on thrones looking down at them. Are not the disbelievers paid in full for that which they used to do? Shaykh Uthaymeen, he states, يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةَ الْمُؤْمِنْ يَضْحَقْ مِنَ الْكَافِرِ فَهَلْ هُنَاكْ اتفاق بين الضحكين الذين أشرقوا يضحكون في الدنيا من المؤمنين والمؤمنون يضحكون يوم القيامة من الكفار فهل هناك تساو بين الصفتين الجواب لا لأن ضحك الكفار ينتهي بالبكاء 
وضحك المؤمن ينتهي بالسعادة قال الله تعالى فيوم الذين آمنوا من الكفار يضحكون على الأرائك ينظرون هل ثوب الكفار ما كانوا يفعلون نعم ثوب الكفار ما كانوا يفعلون والحمد لله رب العالمين نحن نشكر الله عز وجل أنه يقضي بين الكفار بعدله ويلقي الكاف في النار جحنم خالدا فيها أبدا مؤبدا نشكر الله على هذا لأن هذا هو العدل ونشكر الله تعالى أنه يثيب المؤمن جنات الفردوس نزلا والله المستعان شيخ قتيمين يقول on the day of judgment the believer will laugh at the disbeliever Is there any agreement between the two types of laughing? Are they the same? The Shaykh, he says, those who disbelieve and associate partners with Allah, the polytheists, they laugh at the believers in the life of this world. And the believers will laugh at the disbelievers on the Day of Judgment. Is there any Equivalence between the two types of laughing? The Shaykh says no. That is because the laughter of the disbelievers, it ends with crying. Whereas the laughter of the believers ends with happiness. So, on this day those who believe, they will laugh at the disbelievers on thrones looking down at them. Or the disbelievers paid for that which they... Used to do, yes, they are paid for that which they used to do. As the Shaykh says, Naam, thubib al kufar ma kanu yafarun. Yes, the disbelievers, they are paid in full for that which they used to do, and all of the praises due to Allah, the Lord of the creation. Shaykh Uthaymeen, he says, We thank Allah that He would judge between us and the disbelievers with justice, and He will give them their justice. So Allah will throw the disbeliever into the hellfire. He will throw the disbeliever into the hellfire to abide therein forever, never to come out. So we thank Allah for this, because this is justice from Allah. And we thank Allah Ta'ala that He rewards the believer with the gardens of Firdaus. They will be the permanent guests of Allah and they will be hosted in the help is sought with Allah. Al Hafid ibn Kathir, and we will end with this. He states Allah informs us that the criminals used to laugh at the believers in the worldly life. In other words, they would mock them. And they would despise them. Whenever the believers would pass by. Or whenever they would pass by the believers. They would wink at one another. About the, we you know how you like do like that. And look, at, look at him. And make a mockery. Meaning they would have contempt. Or hold them in contempt. And looking down upon them. And when they returned back to their people. They would return back jesting. Meaning. When these criminals turn back or return to their homes, they go back happy and pleased and laughing at the, belie- at the believer. This means that whatever they request, they find it. Yet with this, they are still not grateful for Allah's favor upon them. Rather, they busy themselves with despising and envying the believers. And when they see the believers, they say, indeed, these individuals are astray. Meaning because they are upon a religion other than their own religion. So because we don't practice the religion that the people are practicing, they say we are astray. But they were not sent as watchers over them. Meaning these criminals have not been sent as guardians over the deeds and the statements of these believers. These wrongdoers have not been made responsible for them. So why are they so concerned with them? And why have they made them the focus of their intention? This is why Allah, he states... قَالَ اخْسَأُوا فِيهَا وَلَا تُكَلِّمُونَ 
إنه كان فريق من عباد يقولون ربنا آمنا فاغفر لنا وارحمنا وأنت خير الراحمين فاتخذتموهم سخريا حتى أنسوكم ذكري وكنتم منهم تضحكون إني جزيتهم اليوم بما صبروا أنهم هم الفائزون Allah will say to these criminals remain in your misery and wretchedness remain in your ignominy and don't speak to me Allah will don't Allah will tell them don't speak to me Don't say a word. Reverly, there was a group of my servants who used to say, Our Lord, we believe, so forgive us. And have mercy upon us, for you are the best of those who show mercy. But you took them to be a laughing stock. You used to laugh at them. This is Allah addressing the disbelievers on the day of judgment. You used to laugh at them. When we would walk by in our thobes and our women would walk by with hijab on and with niqab on or with hijab and they were being modest. When they would see our children, our sons with their thobes above the ankles and the likes and when they would hear the call of prayer and they would see us out worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they would laugh at us. They would make mockery of us. They would point, look at him, look, look, look. Allah will say to them, but you took them for a laughing stock. So much so that they made you forget my remembrance while you used to laugh at them. Meaning, you got so consumed into making mockery of those believers that you forgot my remembrance. Here it is, those believers are busy with the remembrance of Allah, but you are busy with making mockery of them. You forgot to remember me. Allah says what means indeed I have rewarded them on this day for their patience and indeed they are the triumphant ones be patient man. don't 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 let go your deen be patient it'll be over soon and we will get the last laugh right. we will get we wish we will certainly get the last laugh the believers will get the last laugh So let them make their mockery. Let them make fun of us. Let them talk about our garments above our ankles. Let them talk about how our women look like ninjas. and Let them say what they want to say. Be patient for the matter is near. The matter is near. So on this day, meaning the day of judgment, those... Who believe will laugh at the disbelievers. Meaning as retribution for how these people used to laugh at them. On thrones. Meaning looking at Allah. As a reward for bearing the false claims against them that they were misguided. They were not misguided at all. At all. Rather they were the close awliya. Who will be looking at their Lord in the, in, in the place of his honor. And also we know that the believers will be looking down upon the kuffar as they in the hellfire and they will ask for water. We can't give you any of that. Are not the disbelievers paid for that which they used to do? Meaning, will the disbelievers be recompensed for their mockery and belittlement against the believers or not? This means that they surely will be paid in full, completely and perfectly for their wicked behavior. And this is the end of the tafsir of Surah Al-Mutaffifin. And all of the praise and thanks is due to Allah. Barakallahu feekum wa subhanaka ala muhammadika shalom wa la ilaha ila anta staghfiru wa matu.
There are some names that the creation can take, and there are names that they can't. Like, they can't take the name al Hayy, because that means ever living, don't die. Or Ar Rahman. But a person can be Kareem, a person uh, can be Alim, the person can be Rabbul Bayt. That word Lord has to be connected to something, which means ownership. Rabbul Ard, this is the landlord. Rabbul Bayt, this is the house. And in Surah Yusuf, when it's talking about your Lord, meaning their king. He was their king. But Allah Azza wa Jal is Rabbul Alameen, the Lord of the creation. And this word also, Lord, should not be taken like just Lord. But if you connect it to something, Lord of the house, meaning the owner of the house, then that is allowed. Or well, we say landlord. But that's allowed. It, sh- it shows ownership. But just to call somebody Lord, no. The Lord Jesus Christ, no. That's we don't do that. Lord, sir, whoever. No. No. It was due in in, the, in those legislations or the legislations of the past. It was allowed to prostrate to another out of respect and honor and dignity, to show dignity, a uh, person of dignity. Like when the malaika prostrated to Adam, it wasn't a prostration of the worship of Adam, but it was a prostration of honoring Adam. And likewise, when the mother and father of Yusuf and his brothers prostrated to him, it was a prostration of honor and respect being shown, or greetings. It's another one, a posture, a prostration of greetings. But this is not allowed uh, in our legislation. And this is one of the proofs that uh, are used by the scholars who say, uh, there are things from the previous legislation that's not from our legislation. This is one of them. But then there are things from the previous le- legislation which is from our legislation, like making dua to Allah, mentioning one of the good deeds that you did in order for Allah to answer your dua, like the three men who were in the cave. Uh, they were from Bani Israel. No. بارك الله فيكم وسبحانك اللهم حمدك شهدنا لا إله إلا أنت استغفرك ونعوذ بك